At Money Watch, we take the position that it's impossible to predict what the economy or the markets will do in the future. But today, I'm joined by Liz Ann Saunders, the chief investment strategist at Charles Schwab, who has what even we must admit is a pretty good crystal ball. In 2006, she warned of the ripple effects from the housing crunch. In 2007, she warned that a recession was imminent. And then, when things looked darkest, she correctly predicted the turnaround. Liz, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I heard you speak in around April of 2009 before I started here. And you said then that the recession was either over or very soon would be over. And I tried to pitch that story to various news outlets. And it was so about. against the consensus that no one would touch it. I know. Well, you proved correct. Um, now, what do you think the consensus is? And are you buying it or do you have a different view? Well, the consensus is probably somewhere in the 2 to 3 percent GDP growth rate for this year range. And that's not great, right? Well, it depends on your perspective, actually. You know, a slow, steady pace of growth, assuming inflation also stays relatively low, is a pretty good environment. It keeps interest rates low, usually is a pretty good environment for the stock market. So it may not be such a bad thing. I happen to think we're going to get a little bit higher than that, but certainly don't expect any um, semblance of robust growth. Well, that's a fairly optimistic view. And I'd say that out there, everyone feels so grim. Right. Why is that? Well, I think it's the nature of the downturn that preceded this. It's, it's length, it's severity, um, the, the crisis nature of it. Uh, was unprecedented in so many ways, I think, because of the severity of the housing downturn as well as the jobs picture, both of which really affects us emotionally and long-lastingly. So I think, I think it's all of those things that has kept skepticism about this recovery pretty rampant. Another number that's improving but still is kind of ugly is unemployment. Right. Why is it that so long after the recession officially ended, unemployment numbers are still pretty high? It's always that way. <laughs> you know, usually when recessions start, the unemployment rate is low. Usually when recessions end, the unemployment rate is high. Not only is it typically high, it's usually still rising. It's a recession that ultimately drives the unemployment rate higher. And the recovery always happens first, and it eventually brings down the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate peaked about a year and a half ago at 10.1 percent, and it's 8.8 percent. We'd love it to be a lot lower, but the path is certainly in the right direction, and we're starting to pick up some speed. So I, I think we're getting there, but it is a lagging indicator. It tends to be the last thing to improve. There's nothing unique about that this time. And what is it, do you think, that is the main driver of employment? Is it, is it demand? Oh, I think it's, a, it's, it's everything. Corporate profits suggest we should be on a, a pretty sharp downward slope because corporate profits have been extraordinarily powerful. But in the case of small businesses, they still have an access to credit problem. Credit is the lifeblood of small business. And in order to expand and hire and invest, they need to, uh, they need to have that. And some of it's just general confidence. So I think you put all of those things together, and it's going to take a, a while. But at least you know we're heading in the right direction. So uh, we talked about your crystal ball. It's pretty good. What indicators are you looking at now to tell you where things are going to be? A lot of the same indicators that, I, that I've always looked at. Um, you know, the, 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 the trigger back in 2007 that things were, were starting to deteriorate were the leading indicators. They had rolled over and started to move down. Same thing happened in March of 2009 which made me start thinking in April and May that we were starting to see a turn. The leading indicators turned and started to uh, to go up. So that gives me confidence. When you say leading indicators, what are you referring to? Well, there, there's a, actually a specific index that tracks the leading indicators. It's put out by the conference board on a monthly basis. It's, there, it's very simply called the index of leading indicators. It has 10 sub-indicators that make up that index. And one of them is the stock market. One of them is initial unemployment claims. Um, it's got the yield curve, the spread between short-term interest rates and long-term interest rates, some money supply measures, orders, consumer goods orders, capital goods orders. So it's a mix of indicators, all of which I look at individually and then I look at them collectively. And they tend to turn first before overall GDP turns. So they, that's why I call them the heads up indicators. They're the things to look at to get a sense of whether maybe you're at an inflection point. Well, I'm glad to know they're looking up. Yeah. Liz, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching.